Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. Today I am at Holmes Honda here in Shreveport, Louisiana, and we are going to try to answer the question, as you know per the title, is the 2022 Honda Ridgeline RTLE worth the price of $48,165? So I'm going to show you some of the real highlights of what you get for that price. We're not going to do a three hour video and go in depth as much as we probably could, but we'll kind of hit the highlights of what you have here. And the thing about the Ridgeline is that while it is a mid-sized truck, it is unibody, it has independent rear suspension. That means that it has a very comfortable ride quality. For 2021, Honda basically took everything from the A pillar forward right here forward and really kind of squared things off gave it a more boxy look to make it look more well truck like in what based on what people were saying that's the whole point and purpose of that and so i don't know if that quieted people down saying that it's not really a truck but it is what it is this is a very popular seller with honda so that says a lot so let's start taking a look at what we have the exterior color is modern steel metallic it has a gray interior that we'll take a much closer look at shortly here on the front end you will find the led headlights the daytime running lights and the led fog lights down there on the lower portion of the bumper this truck is so well specced out for its price point, you would expect that it does have the blinker option. It does come with blinkers. I'll even show you how to use those later on in case you're wondering. Safety-wise, Honda Sensing is here. What exactly does that entail? Well, you've got adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, lane departure mitigation. There's quite a bit here in those areas. And let's answer a couple of questions that I know people often have now these are not power folding side view mirrors. That is an option that is available. They're manually folding. But the other thing that people like to know about, the turn signal indicator. Is it built into the side view mirrors? I don't have to answer that question for you. And while there's only one engine option available, what's under the hood here is not exactly lacking. Let's open the hood and take a look at exactly what that is. One thing I did not mention earlier, we were talking about some of the changes that came about for the 2021 models that obviously carried over here to 2022, is the fact that these trucks are no longer available with front wheel drive. All of them, no matter what the trim level, come standard all wheel drive. And under the hood here is the 3.5 liter V6. It makes 280 horsepower, 262 pounds-feet of torque made it to a nine-speed automatic transmission. MPGs come in at 18 city, 24 highway, 21 combined, and according to Honda, you should use 4.8 gallons of gas per every 100 miles you drive. That's not too bad. All right, guys, let's take a quick look at the remote. As you can see, everything you would expect to see there, and I know a lot of you really like the feature right down here. It's going to be the remote start feature. Tire size is 245.60 at all four corners, wrapped around 18 inch wheels. And I apologize for the fact that, well, somebody's mowing grass over there. These guys seem to follow me around. So if you like Chrome, well, you have a little bit of that here with the door handles. You're gonna have your button right here that can allow you to open the interior right there with the remote on your person, that's easy. Got some chrome surround on the windows right here. And there is a power rear window. But right here is one of the most important features of the Ridgeline that really sets it apart from other trucks. Obviously, you have the traditional way of opening the rear tailgate. Doing that one-handed, so that'll tell you that that's not too terribly heavy. But with the bed trunk being right here, you really can't reach anything if you open that bed trunk, which let's see if I can do that from this angle. There we go. That would just be impossible. Thankfully, Honda has thought of that right under the all-wheel drive logo or a little bit to the left is a release that allows you to open the tailgate in a very much non-traditional way so that you can access this multitasking bed trunk. How is it a multitasker? Well, you can store your floor mats in here if you want to. That's always a good thing, right? And then there actually are partitions available. That's what goes in these areas right here. So you can actually separate this out into four different areas for snacks, drinks. You can load this whole thing up with ice. 
and keep everything nice and cool and chilled. You could even, after a day of, well, whatever it is you're doing that got your boots or your overalls dirty or whatever you have on, you could put those in here and hose everything down. And the best part of all is that, well, it's not that hard to get all of that dirty water or the ice when it melts down to water out of this area and get everything nice and taken care of. And the spare tire right here is very easy to deal with. There's a couple of wing nuts on each side. Kind of hard to do this one-handed. I'll show you in just a second in B-roll footage what it looks like. But what happens is you pull that whole tray out and it just makes it so much easier to gain access to the spare tire. What about towing and payload? Towing ranges between 3,500 and 5,000 pounds and your payload ranges between 1,509 and 1,583 pounds. In-bed lighting is going to be found on each side. It would be nice to be able to look at this at night, but unfortunately, well, we can't necessarily do that here today because it is kind of bright. And then right here, a little bit of storage space, and you also have a power outlet right there. So a big advantage right there. Well, and one more thing before we move on from the bed. When you take a look at the fender well right here, this being a little bit of a configuration that's different from your traditional truck, well, those fender wells don't come up as high into the bed as they normally would. That means that you could stack a lot more in here in the way of plywood or sheetrock or whatever you may want to do in ways that you couldn't do in your traditional truck. Now, if you're saying, Tom, you forgot to show us the B-roll footage of that tray with the tire in it, there's a reason why I'm doing it this way. I went ahead and pulled it out, but I want to give you a quick tip. Here is one of those wing nuts that I was talking about that you remove that holds this in place when you're driving down the road and you don't need it. Be careful when you screw these back down. Don't over tighten those because I guarantee you, you'll regret that next time you try and get them out because they're very hard to turn when they're in there and they're too tight. And if you're wondering, what is this little funnel for right here? Let me show you. We talked about the MPGs earlier. Well. If you are trying to get the best possible, let's open this real quick and we'll hit the button right here real fast. What happens is if you run out of gas and you have to use a gas can, well, you're going to insert that and that's going to allow you to actually fill the tank because it opens all of the baffles right there and that will take care of that. That's why you have that funnel. Okay, as we start to take a look into the interior, this is the gray interior I told you about earlier. We're going to take a look at the rear seat area and this lever right here, pull on that, that's going to allow you to raise the seat backs up or the seats themselves up on both sides and you have extra storage. If maybe it's raining and you need to keep something nice and dry, well, this is where you can do that if this area is available. I'm going to have the fold down armrest right here for a couple of drinks, maybe some snacks right there and then tri-zone climate. Now you don't have tri-zone climate control, but you do have tri-zone climate because you've got dual zone in the front, single zone here in the rear. Now, you may not be able to control it back here, but you do have your dual air conditioning vents and boy, it's gonna be kind of hard to tell unless I raise these seats back up. Hey, it's multitasking for car and truck review videos. Now I can give you a really good up close shot of those two USB ports instead of just telling you that they're down there and hope that I get the shot. Now you know. Also, you're going to have the seat back pockets right here or what are often referred to as map pockets. Now one thing that we don't see here are large door bins. In fact, there are no door bins here on the rear. I don't know that that's a big deal because typically when you're watching these videos, you're the driver. The passengers are the ones who might complain about there not being a door bin right there, but it is what it is. And if you're a passenger and you're saying, man, I just don't like those rear doors with no door bins. Well, you better hurry up and call a shotgun because you not only have an upper door bin right here with a couple of drink holders, a lot of space for storage, for snacks, whatever you like to have in there, Skittles, Twinkies, Starburst, protein bars. If you're kind of taking care of yourself in the gym, whatever it is you're doing, well, there you go. And you've got even more space right here with the lower door bin. And you have a nice large glove box right here. Who puts gloves in these things anymore these days? I don't know if anyone does, but that's what it's called. It's a glove box and power passenger and driver's seat, obviously here in the front. 
Not only is the ride quality very comfortable on these Ridgeline trucks, but the seating is as well. Leather trim seating, and last but not least, before we move over to the driver's side, you do have a power sunroof right there. Some call it a moonroof. Some get angry in the comments section when I call it a moonroof. It would be interesting to hear their actual tone of voice in the comments. I wonder if YouTube will ever give us that option. That might be a bad thing. Now, I gave you a little bit of an unintentional sneak peek earlier when I hit the button here to open the rear or the gas door over here on the side of the bed. But you did get a little bit of a look at the controls and functionality here for the driver's door. Everything you would expect to see here. Seat memory, that's one thing that's going to be different from what we saw on the passenger side. And then you're going to have the rubber mats here if you go out and boots or shoes or whatever are dirty well those rubber floor mats come in handy you can take out the carpet the floor mats that are actually hidden back there in the bed trunk that we looked at earlier now if you want to drive in snail mode as i like to call it jokingly but econ mode it does make a little bit of a difference when driving out on the road to drive in econ mode you can tell but it's not a dramatic difference and here are the controls for the power side view mirrors. I'm so used to those being on the door that I often reach up there first and remember, oh yeah, I'm in a ridge line. I need to go right here on the dashboard and controls for managing many of the functions that you have for driving assist features, those driver assist aids. And then right here, if you drop that lever, you can adjust the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. And one thing you might have said to yourself, I didn't see child safety locks on the driver's side door where you would normally manage those kinds of things. That's because they are right here. So here's the deal. When this is in the up position, that means they are not active. If you push it into the down position, it is active. And here's the thing. If you just bought one of these ridge lines and maybe you're saying to yourself, I want to check out the back seat, but you're all alone, make sure that one of these doors at least does not have those child safety locks activated because you might have to crawl through that pass through to get back out if there's no one around to help you out. Just so you know, true story that happened not with a Ridgeline, but with another brand of truck that a friend of mine sold to an 84 year old man and he got himself stuck back there. He managed to crawl over just like I talked about through that pass through kind of an interesting story there. And right here, I told you that this truck came equipped with the blinker option so you can make those blinkers work out there. When you're turning to the right or changing lanes to the right, you push it into the up position. And the same thing for the left right there, you push it into the down position just in case you wondered if you've never been able to afford a vehicle that has that option before. I know some of you haven't been able to because I never see blinkers working on your vehicle and that's the only reason that would happen. Um, yeah, a little sarcasm there just for the fun of it. There is your instrument cluster. And your steering wheel mounted controls, I probably don't need to tell you what is what here. I think you already know. Y'all are some smart folks out there in YouTube land. And you do have multiple driving modes. And when you're in the right mode or mode, you can use these shifter paddles right here that are located on the steering wheel. There's the control I can't say anything sarcastic about because everybody uses their windshield wipers, right? It is what it is, just having a little fun there. Speaking of driving modes, I mentioned one of those earlier. We have our push button shifter right here. Tell me down in the comments, are you in favor of the push button shifter or would you rather see a more conventional shifter here? Or maybe ask Honda, tell them down in the comments. I know we'd have to move the control for the windshield wipers here, but would you rather have a column shifter? That'd make it even more truck-like. But here is the control for, you can go into either drive right here. Let's go through this in sequence. Drive, you can go into sport, or you have a couple of more modes you can select right there. Let's take a look at exactly what happens on the dashboard. You've got D, you've got S, and then we've also got normal, we've got snow, we've got mud, sand, and that is a full run through all of our driving modes. Push button start for the engine to start and stop the engine. And one of the absolute most simplistic to learn infotainment screens in the automotive industry. Honda has done a really good job here. I like that you have your navigation built in. Something that I'm often asked about as far as does it have built-in navigation, these popular questions that I get, well, that's one of them. So you can see what you have right there with that. You can obviously pair your smartphone 
there is quite a bit here trying to keep my arm out of the shot as much as I can you can see what all is there and let's do this right here I'll show you some of the features you can go through I'm just going to show you what's on the screen right there obviously you can control your truck bed audio with those speakers that some of these trucks do and don't have and then something that's very interesting here a little bit of an interesting side note for 2021 we saw the return of this knob right here because people wanted to be able to control the volume of the radio and all of that kind of functionality with that knob kind of an interesting thing and like i said you have your dual zone climate control really three zones of climate control but dual zone here in the front you can sync those two together if you want to so that they work simultaneously when you change the temperature or you can turn that off and just change one side at a time depending on what driver and passenger want now one thing i have to say i'm a little jealous of if i was going to own a ridgeline i might have to go buy it in canada because you don't just have heated seats in fact in an area where it gets as cold as it does in canada you would think that you wouldn't just you would have heated only as opposed to here in the states but they have heated and ventilated up there we have heated only but it is what it is here's a little bit more of that connectivity and let me put my phone down here so you can see the wireless charging pad in action just in case you're wondering and there are armrests built in let's get one of those out of the way so i can show you the one on the passenger side a little bit easier and then right down here this this style right here of the lid or whatever you want to call it reminds me of a garage door the way you open it for the center console and when you open it there is quite a bit of space in there this little tray is removable you can move it out of the way you can take it out completely if you want to and guess what more connectivity another usb and a 12 volt power outlet there's a lot of space down in there if you fill all of that up you've done something and one more thing before i forget you might say hey tom for that almost forty nine thousand dollar price tag does it have rear view cameras yeah it does you're not going to find any vehicles that don't in this day and age at least not in the united states if it's a it's actually a law that they have to have it now you have a multi view camera as you can see right here we'll go through all of the different views or the three views i mean it sound like there's more than three right but there is what you have as far as your rear view cameras go that answers your question if you had that question all right now that we've done our tour of the 2022 honda ridgeline rtle stickering for forty eight thousand one hundred and sixty five dollars tell me what you think down in the comments is this truck worth the sticker price that it features and tell me also what would you like to see honda add in the future it doesn't look like there's going to be a lot of major changes for 2023 but tell Honda what you would like to see them add in the future when there are major changes to the Ridge Line. It's always good to leave that feedback because you never know who is looking at your comments. And the number one thing I know that a lot of you ask for is actually kind of surprising to some other people is that you would like to see a hybrid powertrain under the hood. Very interesting. Got to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me this Ridge Line for the day and all of you for being kind enough to take the time to watch and give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out another of the videos that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.